Yeah. First of all, I'd like to know uh, you guys' role in the film. Uh, what, not, well, not role, but like what you're responsible for. Oh, what, you mean not what character we play? Yeah. <laughs> no, the, uh, I, I'm the producer of uh -huh. the film, and uh, Dylan's supervising animator. Uh -huh. And what, what responsibilities do you hold as a supervising animator? Right. Well, my job is to oversee the animation department and the creation of the animation for the film. It's a creative role, and I work very closely with Andrew Stanton, the director, and with Graham, the producer, mm -hmm. and um, really have a lot of discussions with Andrew very early on. I was on the film for two and a half years, and um, I had a lot of discussions early on with Andrew about what his vision was for the animation of the film. You know, and this film's about fish, and they're talking and acting, and you know, how do you see that? And well, here's some ideas that I have, and. And it, it's just really this discussion. It's kind of a brainstorming, and then it's over over a period of time, and and then um, it, it gets down into to figuring out little, even like eventually subtle nuances of acting of of personalities. Really, it's trying to figure out well, okay, who is Dory? Who is Father? Mm -hmm. And then it's my job to you know put a team together and say, okay, guys, this is who these characters are. Let's go find them in the acting and the animation. Okay, great. First of all, I would li I would like to know how much has technology and CGI, how far we've been able to push it, how has that affected the way we tell, we tell a story? Well, in the, in, in the uh, industry as a, as a whole, I mean, obviously the, the effects, the effect it's had on the effects industry, there you go, uh, is, uh, and special effects is just incredibly profound. And, uh, and our industry, it's a, our, our medium's a little bit different. Uh, we're not trying to fool people in terms of photorealism. We're, we're trying to create believable you know, fantasy world, which we ground in, in, a in a deep knowledge of how the real world works, but, you know, characterize it and pull back a bit so you can enjoy, uh, a, you know, going to a world that doesn't exist. But I, actually, I really believe that, uh, you know, if you have the imagination and the, the time and the desire, there isn't any image you can't create these days. Uh, it's, a, it's a fundamentally different world, really, than it was 10 years ago, as far as that's concerned. I think the technology also allows you to do some things now, because we keep learning more and learning more and advancing our, our technologies that um, it's, it's, it's not technologically driven, it's just that, wow, I want, I want to be able to, to have better yeah. facial expression, you know, mm -hmm. I want, it, so we have better technology, we have better understanding of, of our craft on how to do that. It's, it's not really um, using technology as a story device because it's, we're kind of the opposite where we, we come up with a great story and we happen to use Technology to tell this story in a sense that we use computers, um, you know, and it's just computer graphics and it's a bunch of math, you know, that's going on in a huge room full of computers and air conditioners. But yeah, but there's still, I mean, the films are still made by hand. I mean, Absolutely, it's, it's, it's artists, who, yeah. and instead of a, a chisel or a paintbrush or a pen and ink, uh, it's it's the computer. But it, again, it's an artist that has to conceive what the picture is going to look like. It's their trained eye, their 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 knowledge of composition and. Uh, uh, how to influence uh, emotional state of mind through visual imagery. You know, this is what you know makes the film what it is, and that's a laborious uh, process that you know it takes a lot of people and a lot of really talented people a long time to do. It's really good technology allows you to do what you want to do better. Oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'd like to go into this story a little bit. Uh, well, what? First of all, why why did you choose the ocean as your backdrop? For why did you think this would work? The. Uh, well, one the reason that it doesn't have anything to do with the story is it's just it's an incredibly rich environment, and it hadn't really been tapped in our medium at all. So we were really excited to to explore it. But also, I think it's a perfect for this story, which has a lot to do with the potentially overwhelming responsibility of parenting, mm -hmm. and you know the the uh, very difficult dilemma of needing to let your children you know go out and live their own lives and and make mistakes and face their own dangers. And if you you know don't want to overprotect them, you don't want to underprotect them, and that dilemma is definitely heightened and uh, accentuated being in the ocean, where especially if you're a clownfish. So and, and clownfish is a perfect uh, species casting, which is a new thing, right? When you're talking about making a film like ours, and uh, they have no natural defenses, unlike almost any other uh, fish in the uh, ocean. They don't have ink or camouflage or venom or anything like that. And if you take a clownfish away from his anemone home, he's helpless. Yeah. And so this obviously makes the, uh, the task of allowing your you know, six-year-old son to go off to school, if you're a clownfish, this is a terrifying <laughs> experience. Yeah. And uh, the ocean is also, uh, I mean, Andrew's spoken many times, which I always love when he, when he talks about it. We, we open and end the film on uh, just a blue void. 
and you can look out in the ocean at a blue void and it can mean one of two things to you. You could look at it and you could say, anything could be out there. Mm -hmm. And excited, I can't wait to go explore this thing. Or you could say, anything could be out there and <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near it. Yeah. That's too scary. And that sort of duality of, of, of the ocean makes it a perfect place to set the story.